we have a project for you guys. As you saw in the title, we are going to be showing you guys a really cool technique where we use our retro stamp and we fill it with an inlay pattern, a rose chintz inlay. Yes. So our IOD rose chintz inlay, one of the first inlays and most popular inlays that we have, yes. and then our very well-loved retro stamp, and it's got a nice big size so that you can do signage with it. And so we thought, what a fun thing to do for the summer because summer's a great time for DIY for weddings, yes. and people love to make signs for their weddings. So we thought this would be really fun. Yes. Um, we're doing a custom name sign with it for Willow's Nursery, but you could easily have this say welcome um, for the entrance to your wedding or <laughs> anything like that. So right now it's not very impressive. No, not, not too not, exciting. Not too exciting, but it will be. Yes. All Stay right. Tuned. So the first things first. The first thing you're going to do is prepare your inlay sheet. So in this case, we used a the rose chintz. And for this particular technique where you're using the alpha or any small shape that you want to use and fill in with the inlay, you want to choose a pattern that's going to be compact enough that you'll be able to tell what it is within that small space. So this works great. Our blue chintz works great. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a few different inlays actually that would work fabulously. So, and, and some, depending on um, the design, you could use something that's bigger that you'd, in fact, um, I've seen jewelry pieces that have oh, par yeah. paradise the on paradise it. paradise on a little tiny bracelet. Yeah, so it, it goes fabulous. to show you, you know, it really, you can, you can vary that. So that's a general rule, but again, it's bendable. So mm -hmm. have fun with it. As most creative things are. This is true. So the first thing you're going to do is you are going to, cut out your pieces of inlay ahead of time for each of your letters. One thing you could do if you wanted, and I'm gonna show you, actually I laid the word out on my surface and then I mounted it on the thin mount. If you wanted to go in with a little bit of light ink or something on the back side of your inlay, because that's the appropriate direction, but also because you don't want to be stamping on the side that has the paint because that will then possibly transfer to your design, your project, you don't want that. But you can kind of hover over, see how I can see like where I want that pattern to fall on this letter, yeah. okay? Now, if you wanted to take kind of a shortcut, you could just do the whole word and you could cut out one big piece and that would save you some time. So depending on the pattern and how it comes through your stamp layout, you can you know, vary that. Use either technique, either one nice big piece or cutting out individual pieces to maximize the amount of pattern within each word. In my case, I just did it kind of actually very haphazardly. I went in, you can see the shapes aren't perfect squares. They're not the shape of the letter or anything. I just went in and I kind of looked at each letter, in this case a W, and I kind of hovered and I said, okay, this piece here is gonna give me a lot of coverage on my W. So I'm gonna just kind of cut in a square like right in there, okay? And then I set those aside. After you get all of your pieces cut out, you're gonna set those aside because you'll be using those in a little bit. The next thing you're going to do is stamp your letters. So you're gonna use the same color of paint for stamping your letters as you are going to use to paint in the letters. So we have this really pretty uh, blue hue. Let me get a... That's gonna be so cottagey delicious with those with the uh, rose chins. Yes, it is. I'm gonna move these out of our way. And because I want to, we want to remove these, the ones we pre-prepared for you all at once at the end, I'm going to kind of eyeball where the placement, based on the fact that I know this is the outline of the O, when you do it, you, you're not going to be 
worrying about that. But I'm going to eyeball it in my lineup and kind of um, get it as close as I can because again, I want to remove all the paper at once. So we're going to use a little bit of paint there. This is on a nice thin mount. Using our brayer, I'm going to go ahead and go right across the surface of my W. Nice. Kind of eyeballing it. I think right about here looks good. This is not going to be perfect, but it's all right. Do not slide it around. Hold it in place with one hand and make sure you make good surface with the other. <laughs> now we're going to take a one inch paintbrush because you want a paintbrush that is going to, um, you're going to be able to easily work within the shape. So, and we are going to fill in, I'm just gonna take right off of this little puddle of paint I have here. Um, be mindful of dry time because you want this to be wet before you um, place your inlay on it. But that's not too difficult as long as there's not it's not super hot and there's not a lot of air movement, you should be good. So <laughs> we've got that in pretty good. We're gonna take our piece here. Now this is optional, but you can spritz it um, on the back side to pre-expand that paper a little bit. We're not gonna do that this time. We're just gonna really get right in there, lay that bad boy down on our painted W. There we go. W. Kimberly, you are so right. She said, that's the only alphabet one I don't have. I don't know why, but it's my next purchase. You have to have retro. It's, it's absolutely so versatile. one of our most versatile alphas. You can use it for just an outline or you can fill it in. You can do an outline and then do a sheer finish inside. And yeah. as you are seeing now, you can also fill it with patterns. So yes. it's definitely one of those must haves. We use it all the time. So I want to point out this because this technique is a little different than when you are applying an inlay to a solid painted surface. And here's why. I don't wanna get in and squish a lot. I don't wanna to add too much pressure here because if I do, the wet paint underneath might go outside of the shape that I created, which wouldn't be the end of the world, but it's not necessary. Just gently get it damp and make sure that you've got good contact in your whole painted space. Nice. This is a really fun technique. And one of the things that differentiates um, inlays from say stencils um, that you can apply it here and it's only going to take in the painted area. So, all right, we're going to leave this piece alone and we're going to remove these ones. That probably won't be dry by the time we get over there. No, it won't. That's okay. So when you're removing, you need to get it nice and damp but always remembering not to expose your um, exposed inlay sections to the water because it will reactivate it. Is your sponge barely damp or really wet? Um, I would say it's medium. There's definitely some some water coming off. Yeah, in fact, I'm gonna... Yeah, it looks like maybe a little... A little more than I needed. I would say a heavy damp is what you want. Yeah. And again, when you are doing full sheets on a solid painted surface, you're n you don't have as many edges and things like that to be mindful of. So it's not as, you know, big of a thing. So, okay, fun, fun. This is the fun part. Oh, how fun is that, you guys? Stop it. Let's just set these aside. Oh. And remember, you always save your scraps. This is so pretty. Isn't it? It's going to be so pretty in Willow's room, you guys. It is. I have actually been saving a whole um, series of videos and photos of the evolution of Willow's nursery um, because it's not done and I don't want to reveal it until it's finished. And mm. this is one of the finishing pieces. 
that I was waiting for. So I am beyond excited to show you guys. You guys, that. isn't that fun? If you wanted to, you could go back in with your letters with a contrasting color to pop it. Um, you can, of course, like having to do over, I, I love this color combination, but I think I might even go a little bit darker um, to get more contrast between this beautiful blonde wood and the paint. Yeah, letter. but you know what? Oh, you probably just said this. You could go in and outline. Yes, you the, could outline yeah. it, but you could use the stamp. Like, say you chose the red or a yeah. fuchsia and use the stamp to go over to it. To go back in over it yeah, and you create could. an These outline. These are simple enough letters, though, that you could easily trace as well. You because, totally could. I mean, I'd use Sharpie. Yeah, you totally could. Yeah. Somebody asked, did you seal the, the board? Correct me if I'm wrong. It was sealed, but that was because we thought we were going to be doing a transfer on it. You can do this on raw wood. You yes. You don't have to seal it. Um, it does have a really pretty finished feel with the seal, but you could do that after. Yes. You absolutely could use a blow dryer. In fact, I would do it on a cool to warm setting in, in a case like this and do that. Mm -hmm. um, you know what, I could go put this under the speed dryer and sure. we, this is nice and dry. Let's get it nice and damp. It should never pull your uh, paper like so much that it's going to tear. There we go. There we go. Yay, that is so it's fun. Finished. Did you bring the white paint? for I outlining. Did. Now we're gonna stamp over each letter to just pop the letters against the board a, a wee bit more. It looks beautiful as it is, honestly, but I think um, I think that will just add to it. Yeah, let's see what happens. And you guys tell us if you liked it yeah. this way more. A is before, B is after. So yeah. tell us if you, or you can just say before or after. <laughs> <laughs> I always like to overcomplicate things. Yes, so let's <laughs> move this. That'll do. Okay, now. I don't know that I've ever done an overstamped one, but we're gonna see. If not you ruin it, be. it is all on you. This is not It was your idea to do this <laughs> on the fly without any heads up. Woo, cute. That is cute. That is cute. Okay, so since I've already got this one yeah, done up, I'll let's, do this. Yeah. So I feel like you? like fuchsia would have been pretty too. It would It would have not as soft like Willa's colors are more soft, but yeah. I'm just saying. Her um room color, you guys, for her walls is one of my favorite wall colors I have ever found. And I will um find the name of it for you when I post that post. Yes. Because um it's the softest pink it's like a soft blush pink but it's so soothing and yes. calming um anyway it, it's gonna be gorgeous with this sign there we go fabulous just a little pop save all your scraps guys because yes. you can use them again even with the letters um portion being used mm -hmm. you for distressed projects mixed media projects you don't have to have them be Perfect. Okay, so let's pull divide and conquer. Says I didn't cut another mounting piece because what's that? Can you do that? Oh, yes. Nice. I like using a piece of this to mount. Sally go. goes freestyle a lot. I do, but I prefer using. And we're not cleaning our stamps in between. Um, but you could and should, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> you probably get a little smoother. Yeah, you probably would get a little smoother. But we're kind of liking that rustic look. Yeah. And honestly, what's kind of nice about this last part, um, stamping over, is, and we've done this before where we stamp over, and you don't have to be straight on. Like, it's okay if there's a little bit that goes beyond the line, it, it looks like it's intentional. Yes. It just looks like part of the design. So that's kind of nice too. There's some, there's a lot of forgiveness there. Totally. 
And um, if you're working with a color that you can just, you know, touch up, if you miss a spot, you can use a marker to catch it up. I've done that. Okay. Always remember, if your pieces are not clean enough, you will have issues with the stamp clinging well to your mounting surface. Mm -hmm. So just, you know, clean it and uh, no biggie. Okay, let's see. Perfect. Oh, that is that cute. It totally one, yeah. pops it. It does. I love it. So what do you guys think? Before or after? Uh, yes, I am curious. I yeah. feel like I like it both ways. The before had a much more, I don't know, there was something about it that felt soft. Soft. And then, yeah. but this, it's it stands out. it pops more. Yeah. I feel like the value of um, the blue and the wood is not, the value difference contrast could be better, could be more. Um, in order for this to stand out more. Now you could have achieved that by using white as you, cause this is like low medium on like, if you went from white to black and all the values in between, this is gonna be in the low to medium range and same with this is a little darker than that. But if you went um, higher contrast, so either like really light or white or really dark. In fact, I said, Sally, um, a pink floral like this would look so pretty against black too. And black would have worked even. Mm -hmm. But for the case of Willow's bedroom, it didn't work with the Decor. color scheme. Yeah. <laughs> color scheme. Get the, I love getting these really nice shots yes. up close. What do you guys think? Isn't that fun? It's definitely got it's that so beautiful sweet. cottage. Cottage, yes. This is what we made today, you guys. I hope you liked our inlay alpha technique. We used our rose chintz inlay and our retro stamp. Uh, thank you so much for joining us and we will see you soon. Yes. Okay. Oh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Yes. And like, follow. subscribe, follow. All the things. So you get notified when we come yeah. out and you can join us. Especially when we do it last minute and without telling anybody. <laughs> okay, you guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Mwah.